So I was shocked the other day when I gave out a free grant or a free report about grants and free help available for caregivers. And this is for people to take care of babies, kids, parents, adults, seniors, or people with disabilities. And they can be friends, relatives, or whatever. And the re response was amazing. So if you want a copy of that, you know, uh, and you're a member, you know, just let me know. If you're not a member, actually, you can go to this website. Uh, it, it's A-R-C-H-R-E-S-P-I-T-E dot org. And, and that's where I piece together uh, my, my report that I send to people. And because now to get money and help to it, it it's a hodgepodge of things. It's different. It may be available for you. It may not be available for you. So it's stuff you have to check him. Uh, and that's why this nonprofit is good. You know, that, that uh, gives a state by state breakdown to help you do that. And that's the kind of information I, I, I put in that free report. Yeah. But another thing what's interesting is how big the caregiver market is. You know, and that's why I guess I got so many people asking for this report. There's almost like 50 million people out there that are caregivers and not getting paid for it, right? So, so they're, they're, you know, just off the records and it's not caught, accounted in our uh, gross national product, how productive we are because they're not getting paid. Yep. <laughs> and actually, you know, there's only like 160 million people in our workforce. And here you have almost 50 million people in addition just getting paid, taking care of people, and they're not counted in the workforce. <laughs> they're not going to get a paying job. Yeah. So that's amazing. That, that's, so we could increase this, you know, like a third, 33%. Actually, adults in America, you know, there's only about 250 million adults. So that's 50 million of the 250 million, or about 20%, are, are spending their life taking care of somebody <laughs> as a family member or other and not getting paid. So that's why we're, uh, I see now what's happening in our country. There's an article today in the uh, New York Times and it's called, oh, a new deal for caregiving. You know, and it's a universal fam family care. And, and that's what they're trying to talk about it to get it institutionalized. It's amazing how we spend money in this country, you know, for people to buy yachts and stuff like that. But people take care of people, ah, we don't care. And that seems to be growing. You know, the, there's no uh, sense that this is not going to be a growing market, which means a bigger problem in our society and, and creates insecurity and, and diseases within people who are taking care of other people, all this kind of stuff, because, you know, they're not earning income for their family because they have to take care of somebody. Now, here's the article. Let me read it to you. It's going to be a while. So if you don't want to know about the article and you just want to know about those two sources, you know, whether it's from me as a member or you go to the website that, that I told you about uh, to get the information. But I'm going to read it because I think it's important. And you probably don't read it yourself, but maybe you listen to an idiot like me with a, a heart suit. Notice it's a little different than question marks. I'm starting to get heart suits now because I think that's more important. You know, your heart has to be in something. Yeah. So it says here, here's the article by people who are, uh, part of an organization called Caring Across America. So this is a nonprofit organization, and that's what our country usually does. It has nonprofit organizations that analyzes problems and try to organize the data and the information, present it to elected officials uh, to say, hey, maybe we should look into this and, and you know, develop some rules, laws, or whatever to take care of this problem in society. We do when we have Threat, cybersecurity threats, right? <laughs> we send trillions you know, over that. Well, what about a threat of the, our workforce? A third of our workforce isn't working because they gotta take care of their own family. You know? So that seems to be a waste of research. Well, that's another thing. But here, let me tell you about what, what they're talking about anyway. At this point, the vast majority of Americans can, cannot afford to care for their families, but they see it as their responsibility. So that creates anxiety and stress and everything in the labor force. You know, uh, but they see it as the responsibility and too often their failure. To get by, they cobble together solutions, even quitting their jobs to look after a newborn or when a parent becomes ill. Things are getting worse as baby boomers age into their 70s. Me, <laughs> you're gonna have to take care of me. <laughs> Americans piecemeal and expensive care infrastructure created 
a half century ago as we, as has research of the has reached the breaking point well that's why the programs that take care of this were designed a half a century ago and, and can't stand all this extra stress and that's why people are going broke they're going you know crazy they're going all kinds of things Okay, their organization that wrote this thing will unveil a new social insurance program on Monday called the Universal Family Care uh, that can fix this social crisis. It would provide affordable early child care, paid leave, assistance for people with disabilities, and elder care for people of all income. So it's like Social Security, but this is for caring for people. We need an integrated approach because no one experiences need in isolation. We need help right after an injury or over the course of lives to help a disabled family. So that's why the need's different. There's no one need. Uh, to pay for this, people will contribute small amounts out of every paycheck from their job onward, uh, instead of a scrambling during an expensive moment of a crisis. And they would sign up for the benefit when they first need them, and then everyone would contribute and be eligible. We need a solution of this magnitude because the crisis affects almost everyone. Parents pay almost $10,000 a year on average, you know, and that varies by region, for daycare. So you have a kid and you need daycare, you're spending an extra $10,000. Women over 50 who quit their jobs to look after an aging loved one forgo $274,000 in lifetime earnings and social security benefits on average. So they're losing over a quarter of a million dollars, you know, because they quit their job in their 50s to take care of somebody, you know. Half the people turning 65 today will at some point need long-term care support. And this could cost $50,000 a year. Hey, you see the dog back there? <laughs> That's my son's uh, dog. Uh, our programs for children, Head Start, and Early Start are mostly limited to poor families. So that's why the Head Start problem is not just for poor folks. But because of chronic underfunding, even only a third of those eligible can get those daycare pro uh, uh, programs. An Early Head Start program only covers 7% of the people eligible. But the middle class largely cannot use these programs and even Medicaid long-term unless they become impoverished. Even then, there is no guarantee of home care, which most people prefer, only of aid in a nursing home or a uh, similar facility. While it's promising that seven states and the District of Columbia have passed laws that require paid family or medical leave, most workers still cannot leave their jobs to cope with a difficult pregnancy, bond with a child, or care for an aging parent while getting paid. <laughs> so they have to give up pay to do all these, you know, things that we have to do for each other and to live in a, you know, cohesive society. What's more, the fragmented way care is provided and paid for is a burden. A range of programs target different needs and each has its own eligibility <coughs> criteria. Whoops, what's that? See, he needs to be needed. <laughs> and each, uh, families have no navigation, uh, families have to navigate a complex bureaucracy to receive their benefits and eligibility can change quickly with small shifts in income. A little change in income, you're no longer required. What's wrong? Let's see what this dog is saying. Oh, no, we can't go out here, okay? People are talking a little late. He, he wants to go out, but we can't do that. Okay, here's what's interesting the plan that they're suggesting also straightens caregiving workforce a leading sector of job growth, and one that cannot be outsourced. So this is a growth area of people taking care of other people. It's a big job share. So if there's money to pay for that, then you know, that also creates income. Uh, and it's a growth area. The people who look after our children and who organize long-term care and provide long-term care uh, are often immigrants and women of color. Even though their work is central to the well-being of millions of families and the economy, they are paid very little. Uh, the typical home care worker earns only $15,000 a year. They deserve better wages and basic labor protections so they can look after their families, uh, their own family. <laughs> Lawmakers could put universal care into effect in a variety of ways, which 
a new report by the National Academy of Science Insurance lays out. The most generous design would be anchored in a payroll contributions, but would uh, make care supports affordable to all. It would give young children access to affordable early child care and education, with families paying mo uh, at most 7% of their income on child care. And workers would have paid family leave and medical leave. Anyone who needs help to perform at least two activities of daily living would be eligible for $100 a day long-term care. Yeah. And actually somebody I know who's getting paid to take care of her mother, uh, who's very old, like 90 or so, uh, they, they're, they, the government comes out and analyzes how many functions they could do and how much they'll pay her to take care of her mother. See, so that's happening now in some states. It would be funded by Medicare hospital insurance with a payroll tax and all earnings and higher uh, rate paid on earnings above $200,000. State lawmakers don't have to wait for Congress. Many states, most notably Washington state, already have valuable experience administering social insurance programs like paid leave and unemployment insurance. They're already doing this in Washington state. In the past two years, Washington has enacted the universal paid leave bill and adopted the nation's first universal long-term care plan as well as one of the most comprehensive child care bills. Uh, there is similar momentum in other states. And the beauty of universal family care is that states can create these plans uh, that best suit their goals or preferences or constraints. Care involves a web of people and relationships, a child or adult in need of assistance, the family caregivers, the home caregivers, the person managing everything, and the family members who are receiving less attention <laughs> from somebody doing all this work. Universal family care could still mean family members look after one another. Nothing could replace that, but it would give working people the support and peace of mind they need to care for their family. All right, what's more important than to care for each other in this country? Yeah. And that's what's important. And I remember that when I first uh, started having a child, you know, 30, 40 years ago, whenever that was, and, and hiring a, a daycare center, <laughs> and someone or daycare person, or a secretary, I said, I was paying three times more for the secretary than somebody who's going to take care of my kid. It was a hell of a lot more important than <laughs> the goddamn business I was in or whatever the heck it is. It's just our stuff is crazy. So you want to know more about this stuff, see that website, you know, I told you about. Uh, here it is, A-R-C-H-R-E-S-P-I-T-E dot org. that tell you the, the kinds of things that may be available in your state now. And or if you're a member of Let's Go Help, I have a free report on all this stuff that lists all this and a lot of other things if you need more help with this, okay? So just to see and realize what may or may not be out there and what may be there in the future, you know, for the rest of us.